Stitches show. The holiday season is quickly approaching, and this year, Mr. and Stitches and I thought we would decorate the craft room with something a little bit different. Today's video is part one of a two-part series on how to make an advent calendar using our brand new miniature falling leaves Christmas stocking. Today's video is going to be using Heartland Yarn by Lion Brand, and we'd like to thank Lion Brand Yarns for sponsoring today's video. You can visit lionbrand.com by clicking on the link in the description box down below or the pinned comment, and you can pop over there and check out all of the beautiful Heartland colors available. And we're going to highlight a few of those in a moment in the materials section. Heartland Yarn is a size 4 medium weight acrylic, and we've used it on the show before. If this darling little stocking looks familiar to you, and maybe you only want to make one, if you want to make a bigger version, you can try our large Falling Leaves Crochet Stocking we made this last year, also using Heartland. I love a matching set. In today's video, we will be showing you how to make our little miniature Falling Leaves Christmas Stocking. We're going to tell you how much yarn you need to make one, or how much you're going to need to make all 24 if you want to make your very own advent calendar. And in the second video, the other part of the series, we will show you how to put the whole thing together into an advent calendar. We have a pattern available in our Etsy shop which details how to make our stocking, how to make a two-tone version of our stocking, and the pattern also includes a template for all of the little numbers you need for your advent calendar. So without further ado, let's grab our hooks, we'll grab our Heartland yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a miniature Christmas stocking for 24 together. I'll be using two different colors of Heartland to demonstrate our miniature stocking today. Each ball of Heartland yarn is a 100% acrylic size 4 medium weight yarn and there's 251 yards per ball. So out of every two balls of Heartland yarn, you'll be able to get nine miniature stockings. So if you want to make all 24 for the advent calendar, you'll want five different balls of yarn, and I recommend getting five completely different colors. If you want to get the look of the advent calendar that I've been working on, then you're going to want Badlands, which is a really pretty wine color, Joshua Tree, which is the olive I'm using, Yosemite, which is the rust I'm using, Br Bryce Canyon, which is gold, Acadia in cream, Olympic in blue, and Mount Rainier in gray. All of those are absolutely gorgeous colors, and you can use any of them or all of them together. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook we're using is a size 4 millimeter, also known as a G or a 6 in the US, possibly a 7 if you have old hooks from the UK. And once you've got all of that together, we can get started. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show, and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. We're going to start with the toe and work our way all the way up to the top. So we're going to start with a cinch circle. So you want your toe color. I'm using my pretty olive for this. We're going to start with a cinch circle. So make your loop, chain one to secure it, and make sure you work the next few stitches over top of your little short tail. We're going to single crochet six into the cinch circle. Once you have six single crochet all worked into your little cinch circle, grab the short tail and cinch it up nice and tight. You can work over top of this little tail or you can leave it to the back and weave it in later. Into each of those six stitches from row one, we're going to single crochet twice. So grab that first stitch, it's always a little bit tight. We're not joining our rows with a slip stitch for the toe section. We are just going to work in the round by working directly into the first stitch of each row. So two single crochet into that first stitch, two single crochet into the next stitch, and two single crochet into the remaining four stitches. You'll go from a stitch count of six to 12 at the end of row two. At the end of row two, you'll have 12 stitches. Into the next stitch for beginning of row three, we're gonna work, oops, two single crochet. So I'm still working over top of that little short tail there. Two single crochet to start, followed by one single crochet in the next stitch. That's the little repeater pattern. Two single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet once into the stitch after that. Repeat that little two, one, two, one pattern four more times in total, and we'll go from 12 stitches at the end of row two to 18 stitches at the end of row three. 
At the end of row three, you'll have 18 stitches. We're still increasing and we're still working in the round. So to begin row four, we're going to work two single crochet into the next stitch, followed by a single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So the new repeat pattern is two single crochet into the next stitch to start the set. That's your increase. And then a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. Repeat that six times total or four more times since I've already done two sets. And we'll go from a stitch count of 18 up to a stitch count of 24. That's the end of row four. That's 24 stitches in total. And now we're gonna work an entire row of just straight single crochet all the way around. So you're just gonna single crochet into each stitch. It might help to just count to 24. At the end of row five, you'll still have 24 stitches and we wanna just even up that last row to be in alignment with where row one, that little circle there, turns into row two, which is that little bump right there. So just single crochet once into each of the next four stitches and that should even things up. It won't change your stitch count. You'll still have 24 stitches, but your last stitch will be in alignment with that little row change right there. We're gonna slip stitch into the next stitch and that is the toe section all done. You can take a moment to snip your yarn. Fasten off. I'm just weaving them in underneath existing stitches on the inside or the wrong side of my toe. There we go. Haha. -ha. And because this isn't going to be a sock that you're wearing, <laughs> you don't really have to worry about weaving the tails in and out, back and forth too much, uh, because they shouldn't want to undo anyway. And there we go. All right, let's move on to the falling leaves pattern. We're gonna take our main stocking color now and make a slip knot. Pick up the toe section of your stocking and look for the area that you fastened off. So it's probably a little tiny knot there. It doesn't really matter where you join your yarn. I just like to do it right where I fastened off. We're going to join with a single crochet. So the slip stitch, or the slip knot's already on our hook. We pick up a loop and single crochet. I am going to work over top of that tail for a couple of stitches and then I'm just going to put it to the back and weave it in later. This is the falling leaf stitch. So into the same stitch that we have our little single crochet, we're going to work two double crochets. And one single crochet, two double crochets, all worked into the same stitch is one little leaf motif. We're gonna skip the next two stitches along the toe section, find the third, and work a leaf into it. Single crochet, and two double crochets. Skip the next two stitches, find the third, and single crochet, two double crochet. So that's three little leaves so far. You're gonna continue this pattern of skip two stitches, find the third, and work a single crochet and two double crochet stitches into it. And at the end of this first row of the foot section of our stocking, you'll have eight little leaf motifs worked all the way around. When you get all the way back around to the beginning, you're gonna find that single crochet that you join your yarn with, and you're going to slip stitch to join the row. So every row of the falling leaves stitch is joined with a slip stitch, and every row will have eight little leaves in it, or 24 stitches. So you're always gonna have 24 stitches 
in a row, but they'll be easier to count if you just count the leaves. So there'll be eight of those little guys all the way around. At the end of a row, we chain one, turn, so every other row, so you turn at the end of every row and every even row of the foot and the upper part of the falling leaf stitch is going to be worked going in the opposite direction. And we begin by working into the single crochet. So if I turn back, that's the single crochet we joined in. So you chain one turn and into that same stitch that you're hovering ab above, you're going to work the first leaf motif of the row. So single crochet, two double crochet, all into that same single crochet stitch from the previous row. So that's leaf motif number one. Now we're going in the other direction, so we're going opposite the direction that we worked the first row. Skip two stitches, those will both be double crochet stitches. Find the third, it will always be the single crochet stitch of the motif from the row before, and work a motif into it. Single crochet, two double crochet, and every single leaf from here on out is worked into the single crochet or the short stitch of the leaf motif from the row before. Skip two stitches, they'll always be double crochets, and single crochet, two double crochet into that third stitch, which will be a single crochet from the leaf motif of the row before. Continue that pattern all the way around. You'll still have eight little leaves at the end of this second row of the foot section. You'll still have 24 stitches. And I'll catch up with you at the end. Once you're finished your last leaf motif or leaf number eight, you're gonna find the single crochet that you began the row with and it's going to look a little squished. So the single crochet Here's that first leaf. Here's the double crochet and the double crochet and the single crochet. The single crochet will always look like it's kind of pulled down the edge of the leaf a little bit. So if you have to pause a little bit and kind of carefully slip your hook underneath that stitch, you know you have the right one. <laughs> You're gonna join with a slip stitch and that is the end of the second row. Chain one, turn your work again and you'll be working in the opposite direction. So at the end of every row of the falling leaf stitch, chain one and turn, so that you're working in the opposite direction of the previous row, and it's just the same thing over and over again. You wanna identify that single crochet that you joined in, it'll always be right below the chain one that you made. Start by working your first leaf right into that, that single crochet, two double crochet, and then it's the same old, same old. Skip two stitches, they'll be the double crochets from the leaf of the row before, find the single crochet or the little third stitch there, and work your next leaf into it. Single crochet, two double crochets. When you have eight finished leafs in a row, join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet, chain one turn, and you're gonna repeat this little pattern of eight leaf motifs per row, each row going in the opposite direction of the row before. And you'll get this lovely little sort of, there's a leaf, there's a leaf, there's a leaf, there's a leaf. You're gonna have to count on a little angle. You're gonna do this for six rows in total. So if you wanna mark each row with a stitch marker, maybe like there's row one, so you can mark that with a marker. There's row two, you can mark that with a marker. Here's row three starting, you can mark that with a marker. You'll know when you've got six rows because sometimes it's not always that easy to see until you're trained to see it. But each little row kind of leans into the next row above it. Six rows in total for the foot section. And I'll see you at the end of row six. Row six, being an even row, means that you are, you've are you been looking at the inside of your stocking. So we'll just close the row by slip stitching to join. That's the end of row six. We're gonna pull up on our yarn so that it doesn't wanna untie on us or unravel. And we're just gonna make sure we've got the right number. So there's row one kind of leaning in that direction, row two, row three, row four, row five, and row six. So all of those little rows all kind of fit together nice and neatly. 
That's six rows all together. That's the foot section done. We are not snipping our yarn. We're just going to leave the tail there because we're going to get back to it. But now we're going to break to do the heel. So grab your toe color again and we'll get that started. We're going to take our heel color, which is the same as our toe color, and make a slip knot. You can put your hook aside for a second. Pick up your stocking. You want to flatten it so that your hanging loop is directly at the back and you want to identify the two little leaf motifs directly across from it. So that's six stitches running across those two leaf motifs and you want to find the first. So there's your two little leaves. Here's the first leaf and there's one, two, three stitches that run across the top of it. You want to join your yarn in that first stitch. If you're working left-handed and you're working reverse, then you just want to join in the first stitch over here. So it doesn't really matter as long as you've just identified those six stitches. So we're going to slip our hook into that first of those six stitches. We're going to join with a single crochet. I'm just going to work over top of my short tail here. So join with a single crochet and now you're going to single crochet into each of the next five stitches and that will be a single crochet across the complete top of two full leaves. And that looks like this. So it might be a little easier to see now. There's the two little leaves. There's three stitches across the top of each. That's six single crochet in total. And that's the first row of our heel done. Chain one turn. We're going to single crochet in each of those stitches all the way back across. So that'll be six stitches to start. And when you get to the other side, you're going to look down at the edge of the stocking and find the next unworked stitch and single crochet nice and tightly into that. And that will be seven stitches across row two of the heel. Chain one turn. Single crochet back across all seven of those single crochet stitches. And when you get to the end of the row, you're going to look for the next unworked stitch. There it is there, my little tail's in the way, along the stocking. And you're going to single crochet nice and tightly into that. And this is the effect. So you single crochet all the way across and then single crochet into the next stitch that's unworked along the edge of your stocking. And you're going to gradually form a heel. So at the end of row three, you'll have eight stitches. You're going to work another four rows in total because you want to get to a total of 12. So you're going to go back, that'll be nine, back, that'll be 10 stitches, back, that'll be 11 stitches, and back once more, that'll be 12 stitches altogether. So you chain one turn at the end of each row, single crochet in each of the stitches that you made in the previous row, so all the way back, and when you get to the end, Look for the next unworked stitch along the stocking and single crochet into it nice and tightly. At the end of row seven, and you can count, so there's row one, count right up the middle here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So single crochets, pretty short little stitch. More importantly, you'll have 12 stitches all the way across the top of that last row. Your last stitch is a single crochet worked into the edge of the stocking. That makes stitch number 12 for the end of row seven. And you can snip your yarn and fasten off. This is a good opportunity to take a moment to weave in that tail. And you just sort of want to look at it. So this is the inside. Here's the inside of your stocking. You can just take your needle and weave it in underneath some of the stitches of row 
seven. And that gets that little tail out of the way. All right, this is looking pretty darn cute. We've got our toe section made. We've got sort of the foot part of our little stocking done. This is starting to look like a little baby booty. This is so cute. Here's our heel all done. So there's seven rows of heel stitching in there. And you will have 24 stitches still around the opening of your stocking. So we're gonna put our hook back in our working loop and tighten things up. And we're now going to continue with that falling leaves stitch. So we chain one. Because we finished our row with our, sort of facing the inside of our stocking, we wanna make sure we turn. And you can tell this is the side that you wanna start on because directly beneath the stitch or your chain one should be a single crochet. And then the next two stitches you're jumping over should be double crochet. So if you're ever gonna get lost, that's how you know where you are. So we work our first leaf into that single crochet directly below the chain one that we made. Single crochet, two double crochet. Skip two stitches, work a single crochet, two double crochet into the next stitch. Skip two stitches. The next stitch we want to use is this one here. And you see this one is being used already by that stitch, so don't confuse it. So just skip two, find the next one. It'll be a single crochet still. Work a leaf into that. And now we're gonna work across the heel. Same pattern, skip two stitches, find the third and work a leaf pattern into it. Single crochet, two double crochet, Skip two stitches, find the third, and work a leaf pattern into it. Skip two stitches, find the third, single crochet, two double crochet. Skip two stitches, and the last stitch might be tight because we did fasten off in it there, but don't miss it. It will be the last stitch along your heel section. One last little leaf. There we go. And we're back to the main part of the stocking. Skip two stitches, find the next one. It'll be a little single crochet. It'll also be the last leaf you work in this row, you'll still have eight little leaf motifs or 24 stitches all the way around. And join. There's the single crochet we started with. Again, sometimes it's tight. It's maybe pulled down the edge of the stitch a little bit. So if you have to pause, that's fine. Let's get your hook through it there and join with a slip stitch. We are back and running. We have worked our first complete row of falling leaf stitch all the way around, incorporating that heel. And now it's just the same old little leaf stitch all the way up. You want 10 rows in total of the leaf stitch after you leave the edge of the heel. So that was row one. You're gonna do nine more rows. Remember that you chain one and turn every single row. Work the first leaf into the single crochet directly below that chain one. And it might be a little tight, so that's fine. Skip two stitches, work a leaf motif into the next stitch. It'll always be a little single crochet from the previous row. And continue back and forth, back and forth. You'll have 10 rows of the falling leaf stitch in total once we get up to the top of the stocking. Row 10, the last row is an even row, so you'll be finishing by staring at the inside of your stocking. Join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet and you can fasten off. So snip your yarn. You don't have to weave it in. You can work over top of it in this next row if you want or you can take a moment and weave it in. It's up to you. If you want to just double check your rows, you can sort of look at the back above the heel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So remember you're kind of counting in a zigzag fashion. 
I'm going to leave my little tail out here. And now we're going to add the top little edging. So I'm going to switch back to my green. We're going to take our edging color, make a slip knot on our hook, pick up your stocking. Here's where you fastened off. So you're going to turn it around and you're going to look at the back of your heel. So if you need to flatten it, you can. But you basically just want to find the middle back of your stocking. It's probably directly across or close to from where you fastened off. I'm going to join right in the middle of a, a little leaf. So it's the stitch in the middle of a leaf, but whatever stitch appears to be at the very center back of your stocking. So if you have to kind of look at where the heel's positioned and come up the middle. So find the middle back stitch. You're gonna join with a slip stitch and we're gonna start with our little hanger. So we're gonna chain 12 So 12 chains, you're going to come back to where you joined your yarn and you're going to slip stitch back into the same stitch. So there's your little hanger. And now we're going to form the edging. So we're going to be double crocheting around the entire top edge of our stocking. You still have 24 stitches. You're going to have 24 stitches at the end. We're going to start with a chain two and our little chain two here is going to count as a double crochet stitch and it'll look funny when we get back to it but I'll show you what to do and very easy we're just double crocheting into each stitch all the way around so we're done with the little falling leaf stitch now we're just finding every individual stitch top and working a nice neat double crochet into it and we're staring at sort of the inside of our stocking as we go so that when we turn our edging down over top of the outside of our stocking, the right side of our stitching will be facing out. As we near the end of that first row of edging, your last double crochet is worked into the last stitch. It'll be the stitch just before the little hanger you made. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little hanger, we're gonna bend it on to the inside of our stocking and pull up those stitches until you see that little chain two right there that you started with. Find the top of the chain two and join with a slip stitch. So you've got 24 stitches all the way around because that little chain two counts as a double crochet. And now we're gonna work row two of the edging. So keep your little hanger down in the center. We're gonna chain four. This chain four counts as a double crochet and two chains into the same place, and if you pull up, you can see the space there, you're going to double crochet. So we're gonna be making an extended V stitch pattern all the way around for this second row. We're gonna skip three stitches, one, two, three, find the fourth and work a double crochet, two chains, and a double crochet all in to the same stitch. So double crochet, chain two, double crochet. That's an extended V stitch. Skip three stitches, one, two, three. Find the next one and work a double crochet, chain two, double crochet into the same stitch. That's all you're gonna do all the way around. You'll have six extended V stitches skip three stitches, find the fourth, double crochet, chain two, double crochet into that next stitch. So you've got 24 stitches, you have a little extended V stitch every, every four stitches. So you skip three, work, oops, no chaining in between, skip three, double crochet, chain two, double crochet into the next one. And that gives you six extended V stitches all the way around. Once you've worked your last V-stitch, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, skip three stitches, and that'll bring you right back to that first one you made, which was a chain four, double crochet. Count up two chains, and you're going to join with a slip stitch to that second chain. There we go. You'll have six V-stitches all the way around. 
We're not chaining. We're going to finish off our little edging with a simple row three into the center of every V-stitch. So this chain two space immediately next to where you joined. You're going to single crochet twice. So two single crochet, chain two, and two single crochet all into the same space. So the middle of every V-stitch. Pull it apart. Here's the next V-stitch, so don't be confused by the A-shape, you're looking for the V-shape. Into that space, two single crochet, chain two, and two single crochet, all into the same space. You're going to do that in each of those six V-stitches all the way around. Here's the next one here, and I'll catch up with you back at the beginning. Once you've finished that little two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet into the last V-stitch, you're going to find the first single crochet that you made in the row. It's this little guy right here. So get your hook in there and join with a slip stitch. You can pull out that edging, stretch it out a little bit, fasten off your yarn, And take a moment to weave in your tails. You want to weave them in on the underside of the stitches, which are currently facing the outside, because we're going to be turning down the edging of our little stocking here. So take a moment to weave those that tail in through those last few stitches on that last row. Once you've got your tails all woven in, you're going to take your edging and you're going to just roll it down over the top of your stocking. Grab your hanger and pull up on it. And then what I like to do is just sort of make it so that that first row of edging kind of is the turning row. So there's a little bit of it sort of showing at the top. And then I hold it and I grab each of those little points that we just made in that third row and I pull them down. just to really accentuate that pretty little edging pattern that we've given the top of our stockings. There we go. And there is your little miniature Christmas stocking. 23 more and you've got yourself an advent calendar. That is the miniature Falling Leaves Christmas Stocking. It's the little brother to the big one we made last year, and it's the perfect size for your very own advent calendar of miniature Christmas stockings. You can use these to decorate around the house for the holidays, make an entire calendar, or just put a couple of goodies in it and give it to someone as a little gift. There's a lot of things you can do with an adorable little Christmas stocking. A big thank you to Lion Brand Yarns once again for sponsoring today's video, and we hope you enjoyed our tutorial. We will see you for part two of this little advent calendar series. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.